FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Chris Wallace. Fox News Sunday. Chris Wallace, like we're back in the 70s. Do, do you have any clothes? Like, do you have a, you still have like ties back from those days when you were a young whippersnapper reporter, that kind of thing? I don't know that I have any of the clothes from back in those days, but that's probably just as well. I, mean, I had lapels on some uh, some jackets that you could have made drapes of. <laughs> they, they, they were big. And, and I, you know, the ties, yeah, they were pretty wide, too. And uh, listen, I had a mustache. I mean, uh, and somehow I was on the Stephen Colbert show a couple of months ago, and he had a picture of it. It was not a good look. I remember the first time I came home, uh, from my work, I was a newspaper reporter, and I came home for Christmas, and my mother thought it was like a Groucho Marx mustache, and she tried to pull it off my, the, my upper, <laughs> upper lip. So that was not a good look. I love it. You know, well, some of those outfits, you know, they're 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 actually in now. So you know, you could we you could have saved them and brought them back, and you would have been the well, grooviest. It's like the baseball cards, you know, that you say. Hey, Mom, do you have my, like, my Mickey Mantle rookie card? And she goes, oh, no, I threw all that out 20 years ago. <laughs> right, uh-huh. exactly. That's crazy. So i got to tell you, it's been an interesting news week. I mean, some of it, you know, silly season stuff, and some of it pretty serious. I mean, even when it goes down to right, this, this whole WikiLeaks thing, is, I think, is extremely uh, intriguing. And do you make anything of this Seth Rich story, or do you think this is just kind of tin? tinfoil hat I th- I stuff. Think, I mean, look, I don't know, and there, Lord knows there have been some crazy things, but there's no indication this was anything other... Look, it's a tragedy for it, uh, his family, but uh, nothing other than garden variety crime and, and not some kind of political conspiracy. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess with the exception of people thinking that it was a... I mean, saying it's a robbery, but they don't know of anything taken from him, so... I mean, you know, all I can tell you is that. But the question of the WikiLeaks and the possibility of an October surprise, look, I mean, the idea that Russia is rooting around in, in either party, in American politics, and trying to uh, get access to files, and if they have, and well, we certainly seem to indicate they did from what they was uh, produced at the uh, Democratic National Convention. And when I interviewed Hillary Clinton about a, almost two weeks ago now, she had no doubt at all that it was Russia that was involved in it. So if they've had gotten access to other stuff, and, you know, we don't have any evidence of, but it's certainly not impossible, uh, her private email server, which apparently was hackable, uh, this could be a pretty interesting couple of final months of the campaign. Boy, I'd say I, I'm. I'm just. Uh, I, it, apparently, New York Times has a story where, uh, well, not apparently, they do have a story where it appears that the hacking is a lot more exhaustive than right. people thought it was. Right. Uh, m- many more Democratic Party campaign files and also the private files of some Democratic and, and Hillary Clinton campaign officials. Now, whether they, you know, we don't know whether or not uh, they got access to a private server, but it's certainly not impossible. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, although I was one curious thing about the article I found was it, it appeared that they made it a foregone conclusion it was Russian hackers. Do we know that for a fact or not? Well, as I said, when I interviewed Hillary Clinton uh, a couple of weeks ago for Fox News Sunday, she seemed to act as if it was a foregone conclusion, that it was a fact that the Russians were behind us. Yeah, I know, but the New York Times, though, I mean, she might think that, but the New York Times in its reporting just simply says, you know, Russian hackers did this, Russian hackers did that, and I don't know whether we really know that or not, that it was Russian hackers. Well, you know, I don't I don't know what their sources are. I would yeah. assume they lay that off on somebody. Well, I guess so. And by the way, that interview with Hillary, man, I tell you, that keeps coming back. It is amazing. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is amazing it, it, what, what she said about the Clinton Foundation, what she said about uh, the emails, what she said about Benghazi, uh, all of it uh, has, I mean, we're now almost two weeks past it, and it's still, and I must tell you, I just hate it when they keep running clips of my interview. I just, it, it very much upsets me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's pretty, I mean, honestly, it became like a huge story, which actually it's one of the reasons why it finally did actually become a bigger story after the Trump Stephanopoulos thing, which is still why I can't figure out 
uh, and I pointed this out, you and I talked about this already, but why Trump would agree to go ahead and do this interview with Stephanopoulos and when he could just sit back and watch your interview with Hillary, you know? Well, you know, I don't run their campaign. Right. Uh, there, there are a lot of things they've done that I find curious decisions, but... Uh, yeah. They, 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 you know, he's the nominee, I'm not. Right on. So what is uh, on the show this Sunday? Well, I'm leaving uh, late this evening and flying to Indianapolis, and I'm going to sit down with Indiana Governor Mike Pence in the governor's mansion tomorrow and, and talk to him. First time I've had a chance to sit down with him since he became the nominee, and plenty to talk to him about, both in terms of uh, Trump uh, and where the state of that campaign and also uh, the Clinton campaign and where things go from here. Yeah, Mike Pence is a very interesting guy, and I, I know that he represents an interesting balance on the ticket with, with Donald Trump, uh, but honestly, he seems to have really kept out of the, the, the crossfire. Yeah, I think... Look, he was he was hired. I will tell you that that Trump and I've heard this from a top Republican official that Trump really did waver at the very last minute about whether to name him and and argued, you know, he's just he's boring. He's not exciting. And uh, was uh, at least one, and I suspect more, uh, uh, campaign and party officials said, you know what, you're exciting enough. Like <laughs> boring <laughs> wouldn't be bad in the second spot. And in a sense, he's been kind of the grown-up in in the race, uh, and uh, as you say, not only has stayed out of the crossfire, but has sometimes, as in that conversation with that 11-year-old kid, he's he's kind of the cleanup crew sometimes for Donald Trump's statements. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I think you know he also people try to snag him on the how he's differing with Donald Trump on a number of different views. Clearly, more socially conservative, it would appear. Is that your assessment too? Yes. There's no question he's more socially conservative. And, and you know, I think that to some degree that's legitimate, and I'm not saying I won't ask a question or two about it, but that's always the case. I mean, you're, you're never going to get a clone, and there are differences on a variety of issues, uh, trade, national security between Tim Kaine and Hillary Clinton, which we pointed out when he was named. But, you know, there, as I say, they're always the case, and the general answer is the number two person on the ticket says, look, I'm, I'll offer my best advice, but if he or she becomes president, they are the boss, and I'll offer the advice and then salute smartly and follow orders. Yeah, now, I guess, is there anything remotely controversial in his past? He seems to be a pretty even-headed, and his career hasn't been pockmarked by anything necessarily. I know he was a radio host for a while there, but... Uh, Not Nothing personally. I mean, there certainly are positions he's taken that some people disagree with. Obviously, the religious liberties bill that some people saw as uh, as discriminating against gays, and he had to walk back. He uh, signed a, a, a bill just this year on abortion restrictions that a court has ruled unconstitutional, and he was very conservative as a member of the House on a variety of issues, uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, also funding for Planned Parenthood. That's part of what has made him a successful politician in Indiana, but Obviously, it's different when you're running on the on the national ticket. But in terms of a personal scandal, not that I know of, and he he does seem like a boy scout. Yeah, it, it, it appears that way. Uh, by the way, I I think you look. I've, I'm I'm looking at the picture of you uh, with the mustache, and you look actually that looks like it fits you perfectly. Well, tell my mother that, and go back in time, break the time space <laughs> continuum, and tell her about 1971 that I looked okay. Yeah. <laughs> So you, I know I, I've got I've got to destroy that picture on Google. It just doesn't. It's not a good look. Well, listen, I'm not going to advance it. I'm not going to promise to put it up on Twitter or up on our stove. <laughs> oh, or no. Like that. no, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, I know. But you're egging everybody on to do it. anyway. It's <laughs> not the end of the world. We all have pictures from the '70s that uh, that we're probably embarrassed by. It was hard to find. Let's put it that way. I don't know. I don't know how it popped I've up. Done was, my best. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of hard to find. It, it came up in a. Uh, I guess in in a, in a search where uh, you had your family and stuff, that's where that came up. So let me ask you a, a question. Yes. Because uh, you and I have you know, been talking about Trump for six months now. How much trouble do you think he's in? I, I, well, I know you, 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 you're going to... Uh, you're going to question me on this because I... I, I and you're going to think that I'm a typical, you know, trumpeteer and... Weasel? Yeah, <laughs> weasel. 
No, I, I'm, I honestly, the people I'm talking to, they are not concerned. I think some of these battleground state polls are going to be tightening up a little bit. I think a six percentage point lead in one of the latest polls is not insurmountable. I go back to 1988 and Dukakis and HW, and things can change rapidly, and I think Trump is not in trouble. Based on the now again, it might be because of the circle I run in or the radio show I host and the people I talk to, but I am sensing among a lot of people and what I'm hearing, Chris, is from a lot of people who traditionally have not voted Republican. I'm hearing from a like for instance, a lot of union guys on the show. I know a guy who recently got married to another guy, all right, who has been on Facebook and loves Donald Trump. So I'm seeing a lot of non-traditional Republicans or non-traditional uh, voters generally who are gravitating towards him. So I'm, I, I can't tell, but I don't think he's necessarily in trouble. Okay. And, and people, people are also rebelling against some of the things that have happened. I think sometimes the media overplays its hand on some things like this whole assassination I, Hillary I, thing. I, I completely agree with you on that. I think that much too much was made of that. Uh, I, I have to say, when I heard what he said, my immediate reaction was he was talking about political action, not not action in the streets. Yeah, and and you know I think that showed a real bias. Now there are plenty of things he has said that that you know I think were were regrettable or offensive, but that was one that I think yeah. much too much was made of. Uh, having said that, I think much too much was made of uh, the fact that. Uh, uh, the father of the shooter in Orlando was sitting behind Hillary Clinton. I mean, you know, it's an open event. It's not like you screen and say, well, this guy, he can't be there. Uh, There was a fellow yesterday, Mark Foley, former congressman who was kicked out of Congress because of the fact that he uh, was involved in a scandal involving interns in Congress, and he was sitting behind Trump. I don't blame Trump for that any more than I do Clinton for uh, Mateen being sitting behind her, but, but... no, I mean, there are plenty of serious things to talk about in this campaign, and I think there, as you say, some of it has just been yeah. And frankly, some of it, and I, and I do think this is true with the Second Amendment comments, I think betray a liberal bias in the mainstream media, but yeah, I'm surprised by that. And the Mateen thing is only different because of his views that apparently regarding gays and things like that that seem antithetical to the, to the Democratic kind of I understand, vibe. But do you but, hold them responsible for his... Showing up at a rally? No, I don't. See, the thing is, I don't know how, why he, how he wound up there. I mean, he could, because, you I, know. Apparently, he's a publicity hound, and yeah. he knew he'd get exactly what he got, which is some attention. Yeah, he he said he was invited, but then the, 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 the Democratic Party there in Florida says, no, we didn't invite him. So anyway, I don't, so who knows what that's all about. And I think the, the conservative media sometimes oversteps it. Like, I'm, I'm, I have an aversion to this Hillary is brain damaged story. You know, how she's, you know, being carried upstairs and things totally like stupid. that. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's, that'll reduce your credibility fast when you yeah, hyperventilate over that. Enough legitimate issues to go after on both of these guys, uh, Clinton and Trump. So, yeah. you know, the, the, the as you say, the tinfoil conspiracy theories, uh, you don't need it. Yeah. Well, I am curious about this guy, but we'll, we'll, find, we'll let that play out. And by the way, Mike Pence used to be a radio host on a station owned by the company that owns our station, MS Communications. Well, that doesn't say much, because obviously they don't have much standards in the background. <laughs> oh. You, my friend, are a dope. There you go. I've already admitted that. All right. Well, we'll be watching on Sunday, my friend. Yeah, Mike Pence, and uh, that's not all. We'll have some other stuff and and the latest. Are you watching the Olympics? Oh, yeah. Love it. Uh, How how much do you love Katie Ledecky? Oh, I mean, all the athletes, just watching them, so dedicated. And, you know, also, by the way, Rio, is it nearly as nutty as everybody thought it would be. I mean, exactly. No, I, I mean that's another case of media hype. We, it was going to be a disaster, and bodies going to wash up on the shore, and <laughs> everybody's going to die. And it, you know, look, we do have another week, and knock on wood. But so far, it seems to be a beautiful games, and and I agree with you. And you know, one of the is one of the great things in, in in a lot of these events. Not always true with the judging, but in a lot of these events like swimming. Numbers don't lie. The clock doesn't lie. You you do it in you know you do it in a tenth of a second faster than the person in the next line. You win. 
Yeah, I mean it's no it's been involved. <laughs> not at all. I mean, with the except the only hiccup I think was maybe the Chinese basketball reporters who were wound up in a crossfire, but you could, that could happen on the streets of St. Louis, and then the uh, green pool water. That's about as bad as it's gotten in Rio. Yeah, so. I, I, I saw that. I didn't hear what the reason was. Why was the water in the pool green? Uh, low pH. It was a pH issue. Because oh, God, I have that, too. I went to the doctor for the low pH. <laughs> <laughs> well, because normally it's actually outdoors. So normally it's not as much of a problem indoors where things are temperature controlled. Right. But I, knowing pools as I do, and that was an issue where they just needed more chlorine and a little shock. Out there of you it. go. Yeah, there you go. So. And, cause it, but, but but people were diving in it, and the, the athletes were kind of like, why is that green? I, I have to say that synchronized diving, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Although I could do synchronized diving with you. We just would do cannonballs. <laughs> so one, two, three, jump up, do cannonballs, and we'd be exactly the same. Well, synchronized diving, I was saying this earlier in the week, it's one of those things where even the people who are coming in last place are still just such a mystery to me how excellent they are at well, it. Well, that, listen, that's true of any event in in the Olympics. I mean, the person who comes in dead last is still a, a better athlete than you could ever even dream of being. So, and, that, and I agree with you. It's part of the fun of it is to see people who've dedicated their lives to perfect that skill and are so great at it. Yeah, no doubt. Well, have a good trip to Indy, and yep. we'll be watching on Sunday. Thanks. All right, that's Chris Wallace, Fox News Sunday.